Um, our next presentation then, um, Efficient Utilization of Equine Manure um, by Brian Smith of Clemson Extension Service. Good morning. Glad to be here today. Thank you for having us. Um, the way this whole project came about, this presentation came about, is we decided to have some equine management days in South Carolina because we have very few of that going on. We have 18,000 horse owners in the state. The vast majority of them have one or two or possibly three horses, so they don't get very much education beyond what they see with their management issues, with feeding and so forth. So we had a few agents call us. Uh, Dr. Chastain got a few things together. I got a call from one of my agents in Anderson County saying, come over and help me. And I've got Dr. Gary Huesner coming over to talk with you also. Dr. Huesner and I gave a presentation one after the other, and it just seemed to dovetail. So he asked me, I asked him, we shared slides, and came up with a nice presentation. What I'm going to show you today is a small portion of that presentation. And bear in mind, most of the people we're talking to have no concept of the value of horse manure. Or they're on the other side of the coin, and somebody's told them it is the most nutritious manure you can buy. <laughs> Either or. So we're on both sides of the coin. So we start off talking about manure, manure production. Typically for horses, it's about nine tons per thousand pounds each year. When you add the bedding, that's another one and a half to 2.7. So when you look at it all together, around 12 tons per thousand pounds per pound per year of production. So to get this in their vein, or how they can understand it, I basically tell them, it's 94 cubic feet per ton, so you're looking at 60 cubic feet in a pickup bed. So we've got a lot of material you're going to move for a single animal in a given year to do something with. The contents of it in fresh horse manure, the moisture, if it's fresh with no bedding, is about 78%. With the sawdust and chip, chips and shavings or whatever added in, it goes down to about 54%. Our total nitrogen, and I'll talk more on that in a moment, goes from anywhere from 11 pounds per ton with fresh, no bedding, to 13 and a half. Phosphorus stays about the same with the two. Your potassium goes up a little bit from 9.2 to 13 and a half. These are not huge numbers. You folks are used to dealing with poultry litter and swine litter. These are not big uh, concentrations of uh, nutrients in this manure. A little comparison here between the two. If we're looking at total in for fresh and horse with bedding, 11 to 13 pounds. Dairy is not too far off of it. Um, we had a gentleman, John Chastain, will tell you, that told us that he was trying to grow something with dairy solids and it just didn't grow. Well, it's not a whole lot in dairy solids either. But broiler and layer litter, 45 pounds, 35 pounds per ton. Now we're looking at like a 232 fertilizer versus a 0.5 or a 0.6, 0.2, 0.6, isn't it? So when I first tell the horse growers this, they say, wow, either there's something in there or gee whiz, I thought there was more. Let's look at what they'll need in their pastures. Now be aware in South Carolina, a lot of our horse pastures are pastures that have been reclaimed or taken over from the uh, typical cattle operation. They're going to be a fescue Bermuda mix. I understand about the end of bite problem for horses in fescue. But this is typically what they're running into. Occasionally they'll go back and put some Bermuda in. But on a nitrogen requirement for this, if we were putting out 150 pounds to the acre per year, which is typically what we recommend for a pasture, You'd be looking at 13 tons of fresh manure per acre and 11 tons of bedding. So I see eyes pop open very large about the time that we show them this particular figure. That's a lot of manure. Fescue pastures, some have more fescue than Bermuda. You're still looking at 9 or 7 tons. Annual ride, 10 or 9 tons. The thing is, this is from the total nitrogen figure I'm giving them. Not all of that's available. I'm used to a typical application and we'll get the organic nitrogen coming out at about 60% the first year. Horse manure does not do that. Wheeland's Zajikowski back in 1997 gave us a nice little formula here for plant available nitrogen. They're looking at the organic nitrogen times a given fraction. Now this given fraction varies from the different years. Over a four year period, you'll take 20% out the first year. The second year will be 50% of the remaining organic. And in the third year, 25%. And then 13% over the course of that year. The organic nitrogen amount in that horse manure is about 71%. So 71% organic, the rest more than likely ammonia. If we look at an example for this, we've got 13 pounds per ton of total nitrogen. We can expect to have about 9.5 pounds per ton of organic in there. If we go with one of those horrendous application rates that we're talking about and put out 10 tons of nit of this manure per acre, and that's a lot of manure folks. We put that out per acre, we're looking at 96 pounds of organic nitrogen applied. Over the next several years, we get 19 pounds of nitrogen per acre the first year. 38 pounds the second, 9 pounds the third, 3.8 pounds the fourth. That's not a whole lot of nitrogen from 10 tons of manure, you can agree with that. Over this 
this period, including the 20 pounds of ammonium we may get from this, we're getting about 67% of the total nitrogen over a four-year period. So we're not getting anywhere close to 80 or 90% of the nitrogen we'd like to see come out of it. So we need to think about management. We're not going to, at 10 tons to the acre, get the amount of nitrogen we need for the plants, simply to get our plants to grow and provide what we need. So we may supplement with ammonium nitrate. We look at a program and put out the manure and do some supplementation. Um, we can do a little, little better. If we do the first year, we'll get the ammonium and the organic nitrogen the first year. We still need another 111 pounds per acre of, fer of nitrogen from fertilizer. So that looks at putting on 326 pounds of ammonium nitrate that year. Year two, it's a little about the same, 328 pounds. Then year three and year four, we get very little. So over a four-year period, bearing in mind that our normal application right here would be 441 pounds of nit ammonium nitrate, we're not knocking it down some, but we're not taking a whole lot off of the needs we would have. So if we decided to put more than that, and we're only saving about 15% of the ammonium nitrate over four years, we could go up to 20 tons. I would hate to see the compaction factor from the trucks getting out there to put 20 tons out. That just doesn't seem to be realizable. So let's look at if they were doing repeated applications of 10 tons. Again, realize this is a huge amount of manure we're talking about here. If they put out 10 tons a year for four years in a row, the first year they get this contribution from the first application. The next year they get a contribution here and a contribution from the second application and so forth and so on. So the first year, again, they'd need 326 pounds of ammonium nitrate to supplement for just nitrogen needs. As you go down through the years, by the fourth year, 175 pounds of supplementation. So you can reduce the amount of ammonium nitrate needed for your nitrogen requirements. But that's a lot of manure folks. Ten tons every year. Typical application rates for poultry litter, two to three tons. It's a lot of organic matter going out. I don't even know that it's as possible for most of these horse owners to even to attempt to do. We might find it's, it's, while it's beneficial maybe to help us on the nitrogen, it's just not practical. So we looked a little bit at the uh, uh, other nutrients that are applied on a Bermuda pasture. It's going to be applying with fresh manure, about 46 pounds. Typical needs for the pasture would be 0 to 80. 40 is a commonplace one, assuming we don't have an elevated phosphorus level. On our potassium, we'd be applying about 92 pounds. Zero to eight is a recommended rate. We could see some elevated potassium over time, but not extremely quickly. If we add it with bedding, again, not much difference in the phosphorus. So we're not going to see elevated phosphorus from this. We may see some elevated potassium over time. So the problem with this is, and this is presented in another presentation earlier, the horse manure comes out at the perfect carbon to nitrogen ratio to compost. If you take fresh horse manure with or without bedding and put it in the environment, it's immediately going to begin to compost. So all this nice information I'm giving to the growers is fine until we get to the point it's going to start taking nitrogen out of the environment to convert the nitrogen into useful forms. It's going to go through a compost process, whatever we want to do. And so we're going to immobilize some nitrogen. So rather than putting the fresh manure out and getting an immediate benefit, we're more than likely going to see some crop stunning. When I present this, the horse owners start getting a real good idea of, okay, something different's happening here. That's what we want them to see. So we're going to make it unavailable to the crop. We need to know how to manage that. So what we'd like to see them do is to, present it in an earlier presentation, compost this before use. Our recommendation is they do not use it fresh. Always compost before you land the plant so you don't result in any immobilization, so you don't have any problems with crop stunning. Let's get something out of this manure and don't cause any problems for you. Our carbon to nitrogen ratio has an optimum C to N anywhere from 25 to 30. Now it'll go 20 to 50. There's a longer range there. We might need to add a bulking agent or some nitrogen in some cases to get the composting to go nicely. It's going to give a stable, low odor product. It's going not to tie up the nitrogen in the soil. It's rich in organic matter. It will kill pathogens and weed seeds when managed properly and allowed to go through the heating process and cool and turn again. A lot of benefits to it. On the disadvantages, we're only going to get about 12% of the organic nitrogen for plant use. We'll get less availability for the phosphorus in there. We might need some facility. It's going to have some labor to it. If you're building a little three-bin facility and you're turning it with a pitchfork, you're going to have to convince somebody it needs to be turned when the heating's over with. And if you're deciding that you're going to sell it, you're going to have to look for a market. 
there is a market for compost, but it's not all-encompassing. Sometimes the market's already saturated. Dr. Gary Huesner had this. It actually came from the Oklahoma Extension Service. A very simple composting system. Put up some T posts, put a little bit of wiring around it, and start filling it up with the horse stall bedding. As you fill it up and go through the system, by the time you get to this end, this end over here has already begun to heat and probably finished the heating, then you can move it to another stall and start over again. So when they start talking about what type of facility we can use, it doesn't have to be something elaborate for the two and three horse grower. It can be something very simple. It can be utilized very quickly, very easily. Nicely put up, put up two or three of these. Um, we've also got something from Dr. Huesner on how many stalls you have, number of bins you might like to see in that, and how much material you might need for it. So again, we can give them the end product. Compost your manure, do it by temperature, put up these stalls, and you're done. Got a few references in there for your information. Any questions? Yes, sir. Why, why are you so concerned about putting 10, 10 ton or you said compaction on running trucks out on the, on the pasture? I mean, is that. Is personally, that I, personally, I would not put 10 tons to the acre out. But if you think a typical truck in our neck of the woods carries about 8 tons. <coughs> So if they have access to that, they're going to load that truck up and apply that to one acre and come back and apply a little bit more to one acre. It's going to be multiple trips after multiple trips after multiple trips. And then you know, your truck tire is going to run 60, 80, 100 pounds of pressure. They're going to have compaction issues and they're going to have to run sub to get around. In our upstate, we don't have to subsoil very often in normal economic practices. In our low state, they subsoil every year because we have a hard pan in the sand and soils. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you're talking about having markets for the manure, do you ever mention about raison yes. in the compost? Yes. Because we, we had some issues. We do a master farm program in Georgia. I just, you didn't mention it here, so I was just wondering if it's something y'all pay attention to and educate them. And the second, the second question is, if you compost, you're going to be losing some of the nitrogen. So you're not going to, level is going to be lower. So would that not have cause them to have to supplement with more carbon Well, if they're composting the manure, they're getting very little nitrogen out. So basically, I'm looking at, you're going to put the fresh manure out and have nitrogen immobilized and cause crop stunning, or you're going to come back later and compost and put it out and still have very little available. We're trying to prevent them from getting into a situation where they're putting fresh manure on their pastures, they're getting crop studying, and they're wondering why this stuff is not growing. So basically, they can plan to apply this later and not have crop studying issues, even though there's only a small amount of nitrogen in it. Yes, sir? My understanding is that uh, knowing that they have like two or three horses a day, they have a few acres, and, uh, and they all horses are loose and scattered, never have any problem with it because they're not there to accumulate. In a perfect world, that's correct. But in our experience, people with one or two or three horses have them on a very, very small paddock. You know, the, the stocking rate is, is incredible for most of them because they found out they'd like to have a horse. And of course, I'm agreeing, but let's have a horse. Then they have a quarter acre lot right beside their house, and we can put a fence around that. And, and initially, they're thinking that'll provide all the grazing they need, and they'll just have to supplement a little bit with minerals and so forth. And, then it turns out it's a compacted area and it's manure everywhere. Now most of this is targeted towards stalls with bedding. But you know, in that situation, they probably have to collect some of it and do something with it also. I've never seen a horse lot with less than five acres that wasn't completely bigger than That's been our experience too. I'll have to rotate and do rotational on a small acreage. Again, it's a lot of educational opportunity in this. Awful lot. Yes, sir. Do you have any positive example of working with some of these uh, land sheds and hobby works on this pond that's fishery management you know, in the Because anybody in this hobby scale would have got to drive down and do good example. These folks are extremely appreciative of this particular presentation. Now, I know sometimes the, the horse owners are more receptive or less receptive depending on the subject matter. They are very appreciative of this. Most of them have their eyes open. They'll come up to me after the presentation. We'll have any discussion on what they can do and how they can do. And I find out later they go through home and they start implementing some of these practices because of what they've learned here. 
questions. So um, the need is out there, the interest is out there. This is just this is a side of the horse man they haven't considered. It's just been something to get rid of until this point. Yes, ma'am. I just wondered when you mentioned uh, the market for the compost, uh, what uh, your extension service might be doing in you know creative ways of hooking up those who might need compost to the place who are creating it. We are not necessarily in the marketing business. However, we do have master gardener associations across the state. The first thing we'll do is if you have condos for sale, okay, Tom, here's the master gardener association, contact them. If you want to go into something, try and get into a local store, chain store, that's a one-on-one -on -one between the two of them. But um, of course, we always recommend that they don't try to put some type of nutrient number on it because that has to be guaranteed and we have to go through our fertilizer inspection and so forth. 